Welcome back to another episode of Manga Transdub Theater, where we take public domain Japanese comics, English size them, and then make funny noises, noises, noises. I'm your host, translator, sound engineer, director, and itinerant monastic Nicholas Tyson. Today, we continue down that bizarre rabbit hole that is Kabashiman Oda's Shochan Adventures. In our last episode, Squirrel and Show were tricked by an elaborate and, as it turns out, never really explained <laughs> plot to visit Squirrel's mom. You can check out that episode on this channel, but for today we have... Tengu! Uh, Tengu! <laughs> it's, it's, it's usually this what you say in English. So, what exactly is a Tengu, you ask? Well... This episode is going to do absolutely nothing to enlighten you. Uh, you should probably be getting the sense by now, ladies and germs, that uh, Oda has, shall we say, a peculiar relationship to plotting and world building. But nevertheless, it's always a trip. So let's get started. If you looked up toward the mountain peaks, its summit appeared hidden beneath the clouds. A mountain stream, cold as ice, carved a course between two cliff faces and flowed onward. Sho and Squirrel stood along that river shoreline. This is incredible! Look, it's making a bunch of tiny whirlpools! Taking in these wonders, our companions discussed where they would head next. I wonder which mountain this is! Hmm... Then, from out of the woods behind them, there came a lone woodcutter. He's the first person we've seen out here. Yeah, you're right. As they traveled deeper into the forest, there often seemed to be no way forward, so they'd have to try another route. This sure is weird. They kept looking for a way further into the woods, but no obvious path presented itself. We're getting nowhere. I have no idea how we're going to make our way back. That was how, without even noticing, they plunged themselves deeper and deeper into the mountains. I think I see a clearing up ahead. Yeah, I think you're right. When Sho called out, Oi! The sound echoed back three, maybe four times. Oi! At least the echoes know where to find us. That's when they heard someone's voice laughing back at them. <laughs> huh? Are they laughing? Squirrel and Sho went further in to where they were sure the sound was coming from. Somebody's got to be in here. Probably bandits, given our luck. Shortly thereafter, they were startled by what they saw appearing into the forest's dark depths. Whoa! Shochan, look over there! What? They found a number of Tengu heads hanging like nuts from the tree branches. So here are our Tengu. Now remember, kiddos, <laughs> this is not what a Tengu is. If you're super curious about the truth, Wikipedia, I imagine, will be more than happy to help you out. But let's get back to our story. Man, I wonder who killed all these Tengu. Well, Sho was wondering to himself what manner of ghoulish creature could have done this. We gotta keep quiet in here. You're right, Squirrel. Can't be too cautious. Meanwhile, as darkness descended... Our companions had to steady their nerve before pressing on. I, I saw something move over there. It's just a rabbit. As the sun went down behind a small hill, the moon rose in its place. <sighs> Night time at last. What an incredible moon! The sound of the wind deep in the pines, and the river flowing through the valley, while on the mountain a haze fell over the moon. 
The pair pressed on into the cool wind that blew over the valley. Ah, feels nice. That's when suddenly a dull hum overhead coalesced into what sounded like people's voices. Show chan As Sho looked up, he saw Tengu heads floating in the air, the very same Tengu heads they'd seen earlier that day. <clears throat> Those are the same ones as before. Yeah. Yeah. They hid themselves within the shadows of the tall grass and listened in on the Tengu's conversation. Squirrel, come on, get down! The heads seemed to be looking for our companions, that is, in order to eat them. You say you noticed someone come by while we were sleeping? I'm sure they headed this way. Sho held his breath so as to better hide where they were. Hmm, maybe I just dreamed it. That was when, for no obvious reason, Squirrel leapt up with a sneeze. Eh, 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 Sho! Squirrel, no! The heads made a slow about face and thought to themselves, Aha! They're here! Over there! <laughs> Sorry. They drew a circle in the sky as they turned themselves around back towards Squirrel and Show. I really shouldn't laugh at myself, but it's funny. Show chat, take the stick! Got it! One of the heads dove toward their position. <laughs> Show tightened his grip on the tree branch and took a swing. Uh, whoa! And that became the signal for the remaining heads, who appeared to have taken no notice, to bear down on Squirrel and Show all at once. <coughs> Show mustered all his strength to beat back the heads that kept coming at him from left and right. And lastly, the greatest Tengu of them all bore down upon their position in a fit of rage. <coughs> It sank its teeth into Sho's left shoulder. But Sho took courage and slugged the Tengu head with a swift right hook. Get off of me, you pumpkin head! Okay, don't at me about this. It literally says pumpkin head. I, I'm just being literal here. Come on, just... Just... just come on. <laughs> the Tengu's head split in two like a watermelon. Sho was blinded by the pain emanating from the wound in his shoulder. Man, I'm done for! Come on, Sho, you gotta pull through! That's when, deep in the forest, they saw a clearing bathed in golden light. Oh, man! Squirrel helped poor Sho to his feet, and they made, and they made their way toward the clearing. Squirrel, let's head... Over there. You sure you okay to move? A Buddhist nun, resplendently dressed, came forth from a nearby convent. Yeah, that, yeah that's Buddhist nun convent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A monastery? Where did that come from? Yeah, I'm wondering that too, squirrel. Okay. <laughs> the nun told them this is where people come to wash away their lingering injuries. Fate? is a mysterious thing. Okay, so um, a little explanation about the word fate here. Um, she literally uses the word inen, which is a very technical Buddhist term. It's, it, you, can, it, you can translate it as fate or destiny, but it's different from unmei, which is the more common word in Japanese for destiny. This refers to the sort of the Buddhist conception of the sort of in, the sum total of all direct and indirect causes of like actions in the world so it's like i don't know equivalent to what pope would have called the great chain of being or something like that but again okay so let's go back wait um i am not a scholar of buddhism so again don't at me <laughs> all right the temple and the woman then disappeared 
and in their place appeared a hot spring bath. Hey, it's that geezer from before. So it wasn't all a dream. Sho cleaned his wound in the hot water, and within moments it had completely healed. It feels so much better now. That's amazing. And afterwards, the troubles they'd had in the mountains all became a distant memory. The men who earlier were listening in on our companion's conversation were taking a long soak in the hot spring bath. Water sure is nice, <laughs> and it's so close to the train station. It wasn't long before Squirrel and Sho found their way to a busy resort in the mountains. Ah, oh, welcome, welcome. Let me show you around. After all that, we made it. Yeah, seems all the commotion we heard wasn't those Tengu after all. <laughs> wait, wait, it wasn't? Anyway, that's all for this week's episode. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really liked this video, you can support my work on Patreon. Uh, the URL for that is www.patreon.com forward slash it came from the manga, all one word. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, links for which can be found in the description below. I'll be back next week with another episode, but until then, don't let the man get you down. Bye.